Hello everybody, my name is Alan from Sauber Lab and today will be another video about OpenMedia Vault. In this video we're gonna show how you can make a backup for all your Docker containers. In this way, if you wanted to recover something or you wanted to return for a previous configuration, you can do and it's quite simple. Also, in this video we're gonna show how you can externally backup your Docker containers. In this way, if perhaps your server stopped to work, you still have another copy of your data which you can recover in the future and you can still run your application the same way that was before your system failed. So, if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video, but first of all, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed and let's understand a little bit more about it. Before we start to explain how you can backup all your Docker containers, we need to go to the basics. The basics is what server that you have and what setup that you need to have. First of all, you need to have OpenMediaVal. And if you guys come on my screen, I have OpenMediaVal. This is running OpenMediaVal 7. Also, you need to have installed OpenMediaVal Extras and you need to have a Compose. After you have Compose, if you come here in Compose, you need to enable Docker have some folders. The folders that you need to have will be compose files, data, and backup. And this place backup that are more key to have everything there because I want to make sure that I will backup it. Only thing that you observe it's local. And then in the second part of this video, we're gonna show how you can do a remote backup. But anyway, this one it's local. And if you come here, you have your files and the same one that we did last time but if I come here in Restore, I don't have anything. Why I don't have anything? Because I didn't configure this Restore. So how I can configure the Restore? If you look here in Files or Backup, I don't have any information that I can select to backup it. This reason that I need to go here in Schedule. In Schedule, I can set up my first schedule to make sure that my backup is done. So if I come here and put Create, they'll ask me to enable it and what kind of folders that I want. So if I click here, I can select which containers that I want. In my case, in the star will have all the containers, but if I want only to backup a specific container, I can do it. So in my case, I will put to backup all the containers. I have in any way only one, so not make so many difference. Here, I can select what kind of uh, type of backup that I want. What I suggest you is select the first one, what will backup all the data, everything will be able to recover if your system stop. If you select a PDATO prone, potentially they will not run the way that you expect, so try to avoid this option. Other thing, you can create some script pre and after. What means this script? You can select it to make sure that every time before the backup, they will give a message or send a notification for you or do something for you. The same thing for after. You can ask for those notifications, say notify email, send email or do something or compact or do any kind of script. If you don't need it, leave empty. If you need, try to put the information. Now I can select how often I want to do this backup. I can select a certain time, look like every hour I can do, or one, every time that I arrive in this day, I can do it. Or first day of the month at uh, two o'clock, zero, zero, they will do the backup. So at Oh, I forget to take 22 hours, okay? So it means that uh, at uh, 2 o'clock, exactly, they will do backup every first day of the month, so once a month. If I want to do more often, I'll say every number of months, so once a month they will do. Or if I will click here, I will say that every day of a month, so once a day they will do a backup and continue on. But anyway, uh, I can leave this way and I can select send command output via email so if the backup has been done they will send a notification for you that has been done of course if you set up to have this email configuration if not you're not going to receive any information and now we can put save what happened they will ask me to enable i come here enable it and they will show all this information for me so what i know it's a backups enable they have no filters or have all the folders should be backed backup Updates, prune, not select, and here will be exactly the time. 
but I don't want to wait until this time. I want you to back up now because it will be the first one. So I'll put here and put run and that's it. They will give this message. If I put start, they will start to back up my formation. They will stop the container. They will do a screenshot for all the data that is exactly there and it will save my folder. And now they just finish. I can close it. And if I come here in store, now I can restore my file. So what it means? Imagine that I come here and uh, delete my container. And I say, ah, I just delete my container. And that I say, no, no don't worry. If I pr press X, I will recover this container. And that by mistake, I put apply. And they say, okay, done. All the applications done. You lose your container. But you did lots of configuration, did lots of information, and you don't want to lose this container. So in this way, what we can do, you can come here in store, select hey store and click in this hey store and start. It means that they will restart all the information from the last backup. And if I close here and come here in settings, sorry, I need to enable this one first. So if I come here in files, now my contents again in place. So of course, they didn't go up straight away, but I can come here and put up close and now my container is running I can have the same configuration that was before my container started stopped to work so this is great but it's not complete because as I told we want to make a remote desktop or a remote mount we want to make sure that if my service stops to work I can recover my data and be able to access it in the same way this reason that I'm going to use my Synology NAS why Synology NAS because Synology NAS it's easy and I rather have this one. I could deploy another server to do backup, but uh, I don't want to do it in this video. So what I have, I have my Synology NAS and here I can backup all my data. But I need to do some configuration before I do anything. The configuration that I need is to have a user. So if I come here in control panel and here in control panel, I can come here in users. And in my case, I rather create a user called Cyberlab. And this user called Cyberlab, they will have access for specific folders. So if I close this one and come here in folders, I need also to create a specific folder for me called remote. This remote folder will make sure that all the data is back up in this place and that um, I will be able to use it. If I come here and edit, I can enable hide for the network. No, because we're going to have a mount folder and we're going to use SMB. If I put hide for the network, I will not be able to see it through the SMB and that's basically my data will be really difficult to access it. So leave this option enable. So now I have my Synology NAS with my user. This user should be used only for the backup. Don't have permission for anything else because if someone discovers this user, they can use against of you. This reason make sure that this user is only for the backup. Also this remote, it's only that user should have permission because you want to preserve this backup. Once that you have this one set up, what we can do, we can come here and open, open Media Vault and we need to install one application. The app that I need or the plug that I need to install will be called Remote Mount. So if I come here, plug and go Remote Mount is this one that I want to install. Once that I install, they will give me this information in the, or this application here in the storage. If I open the storage, I can add a new one, I read that, so I will come here and edit and show what is have. First thing, they will give the option for SMB, but you can select all these options. SMB basically will work really well, so don't lose time to try to configure all the option. You need to put the name of your server, the IP address, so only the IP address without port, without anything else. And here will be the name of the file, or here will be the path of the location that you want. So, you ask, Alan, don't have a slash? Yes, because if I come here, we'll have my alpha. That will be the same IP address, 192.168.1.253. And here I will create a folder called home. But anyway, it's inside this remote. And here it's inside the remote. After this one, I have my user and my password. Use the same user and password that configure it to access this SMB and enable. Because I read it, I cannot do it. Once that you have this one, you need to put yes. If you put yes and that they don't mount here, it means that something's wrong. Try to review, try to check if your user account is permit, you put the correctly path or correct IP address. So once that you did everything, you need to come here in share folder 
and you need to create a new share folder. In my case, I created this share folder called home. This reason that appear home. And here in this share folder, we have this absolute path, basically remote, alpha, home. And that this is the data that I can access. Once that I configure it, I need it to make a remote connection. No, I don't need it to come here in SMB and enable this folder because basically it will not make any difference. I don't want to access my server for another server because only slow down. So don't try to do it. What we need to do is come here in Compose and come here in Settings. Remember that we told about this backup. Yes, we need to change it. So if I come here and put for Alpha now, come all the way down and put Save. And I come here and put Apply. Let's leave for a second. And now I have my backup. But it didn't start to do backup the same way that was before. So make sure that you come here in Schedule and Enable. If you come here in Store, don't have anything. This reason, come here and Enable and Start. This backup will take a little bit longer because it's not anymore local in your server. You need to communicate for the network, but normally it's one gigabit pass per second. So it will be quite fast. We'll transfer around 125 megabytes per second. What it's good speed and you're not uh, gonna feel so much. Anyway, once that your backup is complete, will appear done, you can close, and now will appear in hey store. What it means? It means that if you come here and do exactly the same procedure, delete this one, and basic once that your containers appear, or the files of this containers appear as well, you can come here and hey store the same way that you did before. And you're gonna say, Alan, how I am sure that he's copying that local network? So if I come here, And open my remote, open my home, and now I have uh, the cool week. And inside this one, I open here will be all my environmental. So if open here will be all the configuration for environmental and what I configured. So here's the configuration that I did. And if I come here in one, I'll have all the files, exactly the same files that was in the cool week. So in this way, I can only access it if I need. But in this case, I can hold a store. As I write store, I can close it, enable, and now will be exactly the same. I come here in file, I just restarted this file, this resets down. Once that I put up, my application will restart in exactly the same configuration, same state that was before the backup. So in this way, try to do backup external so you are protecting the case that this server fail and you have another one to basically recover once that you need to mount everything again. So in this way, we arrive in the end of the video. If you guys like the video and think that was interesting, please don't forget to leave a like. Consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed. And see you next time. Bye.